This is the talk of Music City Real Estate. Welcome back to another episode of the Talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. My name is Monty Moore with Realty One Group Music City. And I'm Chrissy Amundsen here for Carrie Ann with CMG Financial and my mortgage team. Some serious shoes to fill I there. <laughs> Every week we'll be posting a new episode chock full of Nashville real estate value. You can follow along and subscribe at talkmusiccity.com. Got a question for us? Ask away at questions at talkmusiccity.com. Questions at talkmusiccity.com. Chrissy. Monty Moore. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, I can't see your feet from here, but uh, those are some shoes to fill <laughs> of uh, Miss Carrie Ann Sear. They She's are. Uh, getting better, we pray. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't feeling good today, and so she missed us. Thanks for stepping up and uh, cover for her. And we have in the house Mr. Blake Johnson himself. Happy thank to be you. Here. Thank you as well, Blake. Yeah. Um, looking forward to this topic because, uh, as we all know, our industry is changing, and there's never been a more important time uh, for the people watching this and for us to uh, that are in our industry to understand the importance of what we're about to talk about and to be able to internalize these um, these under this understanding. You know, Blake, about a year ago or so, you were here talking about you know, uh, knowing your value and being able to convey your value. And how many do you, you have a list of oh, shoot? What There's is it like a hundred or something hundreds. like that? And then did, <clears throat> I wrote it because out of a, a purely out of a conviction of trying to, you know, it's one thing to go into a listing appointment or go into a buyer's rep appointment and say, Hey, I am worth this. Right. Uh, but when you can put a list of, I do all of this and then some in mm -hmm. front of the, the consumer, mm -hmm. um, something switches in them, you know, mm -hmm. they no longer want to, you know, obviously there's no such thing as a standard commission. Um, but it's harder for them to negotiate negotiate you down. Um, so I put together that list and I'm super grateful that I have an opportunity to talk with you guys about this too. Again, this is not my list, um, but I'm just glad that we we're able to bring it back around because now as we're headed into 2024, we know big changes are coming. Um, this topic is even more important today than it was then. You know, you, yeah, you bring up a good point. You know, if you're walking into, um, name a, name a nice hotel as an example, the Ritz, the Ritz, <laughs> does anybody walk in and say, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I, I know you're at charging $500 a night, but I only want to pay, pay 200 or 150. What are you going to do for me? Nobody had asked that because, because I think, you know, they branded themselves well enough to know that the value is there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, I used to say uh, for years that uh, people don't mind paying for a Ritz Carlton experience. If they're getting a Ritz Carlton experience, it's when they're feeling like they <laughs> paid for that, but are staying at the days in that they have a problem. Okay. <laughs> And I'm, I think that's a decent analogy for our industry that too often people have thought, you know, all they got to do is show up and open the door or whatever. And that's the perception, unfortunately, the consumer has. So right. it's really, and I think, I think the reason why it's sometimes um, a temptation to give up and don't get me wrong. I, it, sometimes we have to flex. That's just the way it is. And part of something's always better than nothing, all of nothing. And we understand all those things, but I think more than ever before the real estate industry has been challenged by what is our value and now we have to more than ever before as a buyer's representation representative to be able to convey that value starting with a conviction remember people have to believe the messenger messenger before the message ever matters and if there ever matters <laughs> ever before for you as a buyer's agent it matters now because uh, changes are coming you know i was watching um, a recent um meeting recorded meeting that uh, was done for gnar and and the man who runs uh real tracks here locally mr white uh, said that he anticipates here in the next few months for there not to even be any mention of commission in mls no mention of it at all okay and there's a lot of people saying that eventually it's going to probably be that we're going to negotiate directly with the seller for our commission and to be absolutely transparent on that topic i'm actually almost kind of sort of looking forward to that because right now it's somebody else negotiating on our stead mm. or not mm -hmm. because you know you've seen the you've seen the situations where you know there's there's a certain percentage being offered in mls and you're assuming the other side is getting that or you know as well and then you get to closing table and they're getting the lion's share of the commission and 
you know that's not what was presented you know so that's you know it's always a you know i've yeah, been there uh, ouch you know on that uh, but anyway <clears throat> um so let me start this with you know this isn't uh, this we're taking this information from uh an inman article recently 18 ways to show your buyers that you're worth every commission dollar that you're charging and again it starts with a conviction and, and we know what we do we know we're worth it but i think sometimes because we're so confident about our value if somebody really cornered you and said what are you going to do for me well uh you know uh you know we need to really have these things in our hearts and minds so that there starts with a conviction i'm worth every dollar and a whole lot more and i, tr I was trying to share with somebody new uh, earlier today on an onboarding that the reason why we get paid what we do is because we don't have any ability to you know bill people mm -hmm. we don't have any certainty along the way it's all you know it's it it's hopefully evens out sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but it starts with a conviction that you are absolutely worth every dollar that you're getting and so i like the title here so it starts with trying to articulate all that we do is never a finite list as each buyer and transaction is uniquely different you know i was sharing with somebody the other day that to consider the thickness of a front door i don't know jim what is it about maybe two inches two inches thick maybe a front door yeah so, something like that <laughs> yeah. okay can you imagine the dynamics of difference between one side of that door and the other side on this side they're saying i'm going to get the most i can because on the other side they're saying i'm not going to pay any more than i have to because and everybody's got their worlds just the thickness of that front door i mean if you can visualize it that way total different goal, goals i'm going to get a great deal and then i'm going to beat somebody down no if you're going to get a great day if you're going to give a deal get a deal on your house then you're probably going to give somebody else a deal as well so anyway um so um uniquely different numerous factors involved regarding the property sellers financing working with buyers involves advocacy education information guidance encouragement patience you know the other day i hit patience a few times because it takes <laughs> patience, patience, patience yes. and more patience uh, <laughs> protection and accountability all those things okay and here are 18 things that we do to create value for those who represent us a rep uh, that we represent using them to guide your communication and your unique value proposition as you talk to buyers in the days ahead and and please t this is really serious guys that change is coming there's no question about it the rumor is that buyer agency could go away that you're going to be responsible for sharing with a conviction why you think you're worth what you're worth and so please take this really really seriously and i know every you know some of you are saying well i already know those things i don't need to you know, listen to it again okay well i challenge you let's sit in it you know let's let's sit opposite each other and you tell me what you're worth i'll tell you what i'm worth it's because i've done my homework on this topic okay um not to mention uh, about 40 years counting this month <laughs> yeah christy are you gonna sit there this quietly the whole time i bet not <laughs> no no i just i love the startup of this because this list honestly is so many things that i think we go on autopilot and just we're used to doing them and right. i love that it breaks it down from the very beginning and even kind of has highlighted things i think that we forget we do so exactly it's, right. a, exactly. it's a great list um i'll kick us off yeah education please, here please so uh first and foremost education um I didn't think about this until reading the list that we start our real estate careers with a tremendous number massive of amount. hours of yeah, education massive amount. Um, and, and we're not compensated from that right off the bat. There's a huge mm -hmm. commitment of education up front, but as this says, it's critically important that any buyer coming into a marketplace is educated on the local market, the inventory, options in their price range, making offers, processes, forms, contingencies, inspections, financing, closing costs, local customs, insurance challenges, the local terrain and landscape, fire, flood zones, etc. So in addition to our you know, initial education, we're continuing to stay on top of all of these topics to best educate our buyers. That's a huge, huge piece of what we do. That's well, huge it's, value. It's, it's huge. I mean, uh, you know, we're working with a couple right now, Blake and I are, hmm. that uh, came back from California about, um, I don't know, Blake, how long? It's been 20, well, some, what, three years, within the last three years. And the first thing I said is, Julie, are you one of those people who have to learn by experience what the market is like or are you willing to listen to your tour guide 
okay and and honestly no offense to anybody but you know experience is probably the best teacher it may be one of the more expensive ones but it's certainly one of the better ones certainly to get somebody's attention and she said monty we trust you now why did they say that because i'd gotten the education i'd earned the right you know for that for that trust so Mm -hmm. critically important there's so many levels when it comes to the education part of it it's ongoing i mean it's absolutely continually ongoing especially right now with the changes coming into um, you know, is to and to be on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just want to add on that before we, we move on is how important it is to continue that education. I mean, obviously our associations and our professional organizations require us to maintain certain level of continuing education classes. But I think the, 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 the if you're looking at an agent and you want to compare apples to apples or maybe even apples to oranges, it's looking at the ones who are doing it because they enjoy doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, the one, you know, the, I, I, I believe, and I know everybody, you know, all of us here, we know we're a student for life and you know there's no you can't learn everything about real estate right and the lifelong learners especially in our profession are the ones who 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 will go the distance um so yeah obviously there's so much education on the front end but it's those ones who realize that in order to stay stay in this business for the long haul is that education needs to be ingrained in their daily their weekly their monthly Mm -hmm. their yearly not out of obligation, um, but out of almost enjoyment and um, and responsibility. You know, and responsibility. You know, <clears throat> the responsibility. That's the part of the re- responsibility I feel as the team leader here at Realty One Group Music City is to stay on top of the details so I can help our agents be aware of them as well and be a good leader. Uh, Blake, why don't you take number two? All right. Advice, insight, and ongoing consultation. So coupled with education, there's a a continuing advice, consultation, and insight about a plethora of all real estate uh, from the moment an agent engages with a buyer. uh, There are questions, questions, and more (laughs) questions, and even more questions after that. Uh, A lot of, I won't read them all, but... No, go ahead and read them all, because I mean, honestly, people need to be reminded of this. Again, you're going to have to develop a conviction, and if nothing else... If you'll you know go through these eighteen with us, you're going to have a stronger conviction. Yep. Let me let me just pause for a second here, Blake, to try to convey a point here. It's something I shared, you know, on the huddle call recently. You know, I was a, I don't know three or four years into the business, five years maybe, I don't know, but I met a couple who wanted to sell. I was referred to them. Uh, they wanted to list their home. I told them that I actually right now I may be working with a perfect buyer for your property. I said, here's what I want you to do. And I told them how I wanted to have it ready for this couple who was feeling extremely romantic. They were engaged and it was just a, it was, it was precious to watch them, but it was, uh, I knew, I knew if they could set the stage that I felt like this would be a great home and don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to manipulate anything. I am trying, I felt like this was the perfect home. I'd been showing them property for weeks. And after seeing this home, I felt it was the right one. So anyway, so I told them, look, have some, have a fire going in the fireplace. It was wintertime. Have something cooking in the, you know, on the stove that makes it smell great. Have some music going, some candles going and, and all this. Because every, you know, when I was out showing property with this couple, every time we got near the master bedroom, they'd hug and they'd snuggle and they'd kiss <laughs> and they'd smile. And there were so, there was, it was, you know, things were, sparks were flying. So we get to the home the next night. And sure enough, the fireplace is going. There's, they've got cookies in the oven. They've got candles strategically located. Barry White is playing in the background. You can't beat Barry White, you know, for a <laughs> mood. Anyway, all this is going on, and they say, oh, my gosh, this home is fabulous. You know, they were walking through it. And, oh, this is amazing. Oh, this is so, so cool. They're hugging each other. We get to the master bedroom. There's candles going on, and and they looked at me they looked at each other they looked at me they looked at each other and they said oh Monty, this is it this is it you know and so we wrote a contract that night anyhow the point of the story is this that when i was presenting to to the sellers then the the contract and they saw what i was requesting for a commission they said do you actually think for a minute that you earned that much money in one day now, that would have been a time where a lot of us or could have, you know, maybe some folks would buckle and say, well, no, you know, really, I, I, you know, I'm not worth it, you know. But not money more. No, 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 it's not me. It's not me. No, I mean, I buckled many times back in the day. But but point is, I said, you know, I'm sure for a moment it appears that maybe I didn't earn that commission. 
because that is a lot of money. But what I can assure you is I wouldn't have been able to do what I just did mm -hmm. and will continue to do for you had I not paid the price for this knowledge, for this understanding, for this education, for the trials, for the errors, for the mistakes, for the perfecting of my trade, which is ongoing daily. I wouldn't right. have been able to do what we're doing here. Now, if it's, a, if it's really upsetting to you to pay me that much so quickly, we can just ignore this one and reject it or whatever you want to do. And we can, I can draw it out for you if you'd rather take months in what we could do in, in 24 hours, what you choose. Typical Monty fashion. <laughs> anyway, they chose to go ahead and accept it and pay me. But the point is, I'm trying to help everybody understand that it's not, it's not the, the value of that one experience that we're getting paid for. It's the persistence, right. it's the commitment, it's the intention, it's the focus, it's the long hours, it's the rejection, it's the, you know, the failures, it's the, it's the time where you've been carrying somebody around for 300 miles <laughs> and they, you find out one day they bought a for sale by owner and they sent you a gift card to Starbucks for $10, you know. I've had that happen. It's heartbreaking. You know, it, that's what you're really, you know, you're anyway. What was that quote that I shared to our, our team the other day? Um, it said, if I can do a job in 30 minutes with my 10 years of experience learning how to do that, you owe me for the years, not the minutes. Yeah. Yes. That's you owe me for the years, not the exactly. minutes. That's perfect. That, exactly. Why don't you just say that start with and I can just say everybody the time. Because <laughs> we love your stories. <laughs> yeah, we love okay. your stories. <laughs> and okay. I just, just want to reiterate, did you, did you chisel? In a in a stone tablet, the offer. <laughs> Is that an age? Back joke? then, that's what we were doing. Actually, we had a, a cave that we put it in, and then they had to come look in the cave. You know, oh, <laughs> young guy. Yeah, yeah. I just I had to throw yeah, that one nice, out there. Yeah, nice, nice, real nice. <laughs> Seventy one next uh, in a couple of days. Yeah, it's only a few right. more days that's for right. shopping days for my birthday. You know, yeah, I'm just kidding. On it, just kidding. About it. Just kidding. Um, so, anyways, back to the advice, insight, and ongoing <laughs> consultation. Um, I want to underscore: there will be questions, there will be more questions, and even more questions. Questions that include, but are not limited to, <laughs> what do you know about this property? What do you think about the price, the area, the neighborhood? Is this a good investment? How much do the HOA or condo dues? Um, how do the HOA rules say? Well, excuse me. What do the HOA rules say about parking in the driveway or on the street? How many pets can I have? Can I, put a, uh, can I put in a fence? This list goes on. But the ongoing advice and insight is not tracked in a timesheet with every text, email, and phone call. The client never receives a bill like one that an attorney would be generating. If a buyer did, they would not even be able to afford to pay their agent in the first place for the sheer volume of communication that has taken place. So keep in mind that agents provide ongoing advice, insight, and consultation all the time. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I jotted uh, down a note because, you know, there, there's been times, you know, in you know, my career where I get all these questions, well, you know, what are the HOA, uh, excuse me, what are the HOA rules about renting or short-term renting? And I think it's really, you know, as the professional, right, it's really easy to say, well, this is what it says, or this is what it says. I think it's just as important to say, I don't know, but I will find out. Mm -hmm. um, I think- and Make sure you're not just winging it. And you're not just winging it, mm -hmm. you know. I, <clears throat> I've, I, I've won it or winged it, um, <laughs> uh, but I've always came back and um, I think, you know, the more valuable real estate agent is one that will say, you know what, I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm going to go find out. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, but it's awesome. important to know what you can, that. but it is also important to know, uh, and that's why I wanted you to read this list word, I mean, uh, line by line, because as in a quick example, one of our agents recently sold a home to someone who had three dogs. They love their three dogs. I love my two dogs. I'm not going to buy a home that I can't have my two dogs. They're part of the family. Well, you can imagine the upsetness, if that's a word, the disappointment certainly is a word, um, when they found out that the HOA only allowed them to have two dogs. Mm. Okay? Now, how do you feel towards your realtor if they didn't tell you that? Okay? Or they didn't recommend that you look at the HOA. I mean, I think uh, the HOA docs. I think that's something, uh, just as a quick example, I know we can't take ownership of all the details, right. but we've got to set the stage for them. We've got to tee them up to help them because we don't know a lot of times uh, that, I mean, I, I've sold people's uh, people homes that I didn't know had multiple dogs or, or things like that. I mean, you try to get to know them best you can, but some folks don't share that kind of stuff until shit i mean i shouldn't have said that but <laughs> damn i mean i shouldn't have, i mean anyway darn. I should darn anyway darn. the point is 
Uh, you know, I wish I, I wish that I would have asked that question, I guess, uh, right. because it's, you know, a lot of HOAs are, you know, doing things that you weren't ready for. And to, to that point, I do feel like, you know, that some agents will have an excuse. Well, hey, that, you know, that falls in, you know, due diligence. The buyer should be looking at looking at stuff. They should be reading through the HOA docs. But I tell you, in a situation like that, mm-hmm. the last thing that by the buyer who just bought the house, who can't <laughs> have three dogs and is limited to two, the last thing they're going to say is shoot. Yeah. Ah, that was my mistake. Yeah, yeah. You know, not no, the that. first thing out of their mouth is, "Damn it!" Yeah, <laughs> why did, why, where's why my I, realtor? Why, why didn't he tell, tell me tell about me that, this? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyways, I love that part of it. <clears throat> so I could go on on lots of examples of those, but just be mindful. You know, it's really important to know all you can and be real about. Don't just when somebody says, "Oh, you know, what do you think about the roof?" Be careful, and when you're answering those kind of questions, you're not a roofer. Be mindful of that. <laughs> But have at your quick access, hey, I've got a great roofer that will come over and, and look at that roof, okay? Or whatever the question is about something. You are not a roofer. You're not a contractor unless you are. Uh, most of us aren't. So don't answer things at too high of a level, but be aware of the resource that you can direct people at, okay? And then try to make that happen as quickly as possible. Yep. All right, number three is accessibility and availability. Man, oh, man, oh, man. I love this one. This is so important. They don't and tell you this in real estate. So. No, they don't. Nope. Yeah. I smile, you know, as the broker owner of the company, when people say, I ask people, why, why real estate? And some will say, well, you know, I really like H- HGTV, you know, or somebody said, I'd be really a good realtor or... Uh, but it's not uncommon for somebody to say, well, I, I like the flexibility of the schedule. And I just smile. Yeah. Wasn't well, that precious? I get, I, get a, I get to show beautiful homes and work well, when I want to. Right. Yeah. You just work when you want to. No, you lost your life when you said, yes, I want to sell real estate. Yep. And now you're at the mercy of everybody's schedule. Or you're going to, honestly, no offense to anybody, until you get to a certain point, you know, until in, until Blake started relieving me of this responsibility. I'll blame you, Blake. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that I work seven on. days a week. I mean, I'm still available seven days a week. My clients know that, our clients know that. But my point is, you better get it through your head that accessibility and availability. Guys, here's the deal. If somebody calls and wants to see a listing and that you've been working with and you don't answer the phone or you have on your message, you know, well, you know, if it's after five o'clock, then I'll call you back <laughs> oh, tomorrow. Boy. That's cool. I don't fault anybody for wanting to have a life. I truly don't. But, uh, you, you know, everybody's dialed into that so popular station, WIIFM, what's in it for me? And they don't, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of them don't care, don't, they don't just don't think. They want in the house is what they want. Mm-hmm. And then if somebody's skilled at the other end and you haven't sat down with them and had a conversation in writing, then you may be saying bye-bye because of your lack of, abil- of avail- you availability. Of availability. hours. Yeah, there's competition out there. If you don't answer your phone, there's someone that will. There's yeah. somebody that will. Mm-hmm. Speaking of all the time and any time, one of the biggest values a buyer's agent brings to their accessibility and availability. You cannot put a, p- a price on someone in a profession who is inherently expected to be available to respond to anything and everything that comes up during the relationship with the buyer. My gosh, if anything develops a conviction, that should, you know, I'm I'm here 40 years into it and I'm still amazed at how so often when somebody's looking for a a home, it doesn't matter what your your schedule is. You can almost count on it if you're at the airport getting on the plane, (laughs) that's when it'll happen, you know, or, Mm -hmm. or those kind of situations. Whether that is a question, running down information, dropping everything to show a, a new listing that the buyer has uh, has to get in to see right this minute, and then they ultimately decide not to write an offer, writing an offer or what have you, the agent will find a way to be there or if they can't physically be present, they will have someone in their place. The buyer's schedule becomes their schedule. God bless America, is that <laughs> ever true? So. <clears throat> So an agent may have to cut something short that they had scheduled in their personal life or cancel it altogether. Many give up precious time with family to be available to their clients. Agents dealing with an illness, whether they are homesick or at a hospital or dealing with family members' health issue, it does not Mm -hmm. matter. The buying public does not care, has zero sympathy, and expects their agent to be available to them any seasoned and I'm sorry, an any seasoned agent has had those 11th hour situations arise during a funeral at the bedside of a dying family member, 
maybe after they uh, just gave birth or had surgery. You know, last year, I was sharing the other day on the huddle call when we were talking about this, that I'll never forget last March 21st, I was in the courtroom with Andy Cash, longtime client of ours. And friend. And he was going through a, you know, a situation, and I had to be a star witness for him. And I was in there being a star witness for him as I got a phone call um, from my, where my mother was staying uh, in her um, assisted living that she had died. And I couldn't be there because I was, I was working. Now, I, I got up and excused myself as soon as I got done. But, you know, it's just, it just a, you know, a really great example of, you know, our, our industry just doesn't care about our right. schedule. And again, we, can, you know, we certainly can create certain parameters and, and limitations. We can do that. But if you ever want to get this business off the ground, you have got to set things aside as best you can. And part of that, let me share this real quickly because it's an important lesson. When you um, get in this business, do yourself a favor and get family buy-in, okay? Yeah. It's yeah. really, really critical. And, and if you'll get family buy-in and you'll see the value of doing so, you're going to help your clients do the same thing. What I mean by that is if you can, you know, Blake and I were just telling Richie, uh, a new member of our team the other day, you know, look, I don't know what gets you, you know, your wife, um, you know, committed to your, you know, your new life, but come up with something together, whether it's a trip or whether it's a something that you get buying that when you get to a certain point, whether that's certain time on a calendar or a certain point of volume or sales or number of units or whatever the deal is, that you're going to do this, you're going to get a reward and, and make that attainable so they can, they can get buy-in because there's sacrifice involved. I'll never forget one time listing a home from a single young single mom. She had three little kids and, and she, and she said, Monty, after I you know, was listing it, she goes, how am I going to keep my home neat? I, I, I work during the day and there's a babysitter here and I don't know how I'm going to keep this showable. And I said, well, let's do this. And I said, let's have a family meeting. And I had all the kids come in the living room. We sat down together and I said, look guys, this is a really, really, really important time. It's an important time because we're going to sell your this home and we're going to get you, get you guys a new home. Okay. We're excited about that. You're going to get a new bedroom, Billy Bob, and you're going to get a new bedroom, Sally Sue and, and whatever their kids were names, you know, but, but the point is I said, here's what I'm going to do. There's two important phases of this. One of them is selling the home. And the next one is getting it to the closing table. So here's what I'm going to do out of my pocket. I'm going to pay each one of you a hundred dollars if you will cooperate with mom and you'll make this home look like it looks like it does right now. Cause you know, mom works long hours and sometimes when she gets home, the place is a mess. We're going to not let that happen. Right. I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. And once we get a contract contract in place, we have a home under market and then I'm going to give you a hundred dollars when we get to the closing table. God bless those kids. They bought in because we talked about what they were going to do with that hundred dollars. You know, they're, they're kids, you know, some, a couple of them were pretty small and hundred dollars didn't mean something, but Disney did or whatever it was that we talked about. Okay. That meant something to them. I get, we got to that level that meant something Their Why? Okay. Their why to be, do something out of their normal routine. And anyway, so, I, but the thing that I'll still never forget about that experience was we're sitting at the closing table you know, two months later, whenever it was, and I get a phone call and it, and it just keeps on ringing and, and I hang up and it just keeps ringing. And I said, I finally stepped out and I answered the call. I thought it was emergency or something. It was the oldest of those three kids calling me to see when I, they got their other hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, they were serious about this. Okay. We had buy-in mm -hmm. and that home sold quickly. So, so if you're a newer agent, don't wait to find out the hard way like I did that you got to have a spousal buy-in okay you're you're and there's multiple reasons i don't want to go too long on this but it's really really important this is really important i, I shared this with blake early on in, in his career look it's almost like from a spouse's vantage point it's almost like you have another lover <laughs> because you're at the mercy of their schedule mm -hmm. you know and you have to you have to kind of succumb to the fact that my schedule is not mine it's it's my 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 businesses and for my business to prosper i have to be available to people and I have to be available to people i mean 
you know, I was laughing with Connie the other day that I still, when I'm in a restaurant and I get a phone call, I still many times will excuse myself. I mean, I, I'll weigh it out, but many times excuse myself and say, hey, sweetheart, I'm sorry. It'll just be a minute, okay? But available and accessibility is really, really important. You know, and, Q is very supportive. My husband, very supportive. Yes. Um, he got into the real estate industry with me, and I can tell you there's a world of difference between previous partner who did not understand my day-to-day mm -hmm. and the one who does and mm -hmm. is in my corner. Mm -hmm. That's a huge difference. Um, mm -hmm. My phone rings at all times. So, you know, I'm always taking care of people. I kind of joke that if we didn't have a New Year's Eve wedding at midnight, we probably would have had our wedding ceremony interrupted by a call. <laughs> so <laughs> he's a very understanding man. Yes, <laughs> but yes. The availability thing man that is a, a real thing that we provide <laughs> yeah so are we at number five now we are at number four number four uh, okay. research and tracking down information holy cow this is such wow. a important piece a big piece every property search involves looking things up finding things out or helping point the buyer in the right direction um, like Monty mentioned we are not the expert of all things but we are the source of the source and that's really important um, so to get that information they need to make an informed decision whether that is reaching out to a homeowners association to find out about rules regulations CC CNRs, budgets, HOA dues, building permits, checking city and county building departments, um, checking what flood zones or fire zones, the list goes on. And the kind of information varies widely depending on the properties the buyer is interested in. And there's an endless stream of things buyers want and need to know. So again, if an agent billed for their time involved in all of this, a buyer would be quite surprised at how it all added up. If you've ever seen an attorney's bill that has fees for legal research, the amounts charged can be mind numbing. And if you've ever seen an HOA package, that is also mind numbing. Yes, so. So, mind -numbing. <laughs> so let me share something real quickly on this topic. You know, I saw uh, recently and not in our group, but another one that somebody had asked for a recommendation on, I forget what, it doesn't matter, but the point is the broker got on that in that group and said, well, I wouldn't make a recommendation because, you know, that they, they could have a bad experience for that. And then they're going to, you know, they're going to sue you or whatever. <clears throat> Look, guys, it's really important to understand you know, your part of your value is your authority. Part of your uh, you know value is your uh, ability to make recommendations. You're not guaranteeing anybody's in, in give, you know, if you can give multiple recommendations, you know, that keeps you on the safe side. But please, I know we live in a litigious society. I get that. But if you want to stay top of mind to your clients, then you've got to be the resource for your clients, not well, gee, I'm afraid to make a recommendation because, you know, I get it because I've, you know, I've, you, you know, when you make a recommendation and they drop the ball or whatever, that sucks. I mean, it just, it's really frustrating. Um, but your goal is to be top of mind. Mm -hmm. Blake, did you have something to add to that? I love it. I mean, it boils, it, it goes back to, you know, advice, insight, and ongoing consultation. It's almost one and the same, you know, and I just like to underscore again, it's like even if you don't know, be a resource or connect them to someone who, do, who does know. Yeah, you know, I'm not an expert on HOAs. You know, I, I do property management on the side. I can, I, I, I know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> um, I've almost made it a um, concerted effort just in our practices. It's just like, hey, these are the people who you can reach out to. Yeah, I don't need to know, and I'm kind of recusing myself from. Hey, I'm going to connect you to people who do know. Yeah, because um, I don't want to make a mistake, especially in, in a situation like that where it's it's costly. Yeah, but you do want to be, I mean, again, our goal is, uh, tell this to all of our new agents all the time, your goal isn't to go out and sell a home today necessarily. It's a great thing to do that. That's how we get paid. Mm -hmm. But definitely your goal is to add to, to the uh, uh, database of people who know, like, and trust yep, you. And, right. and, then, and then get them used to calling you for that advice. That's and right. then you make sure that you know where that, that's the right. answer to that advice is. That's right. right. So no, uh, number five is strategy. I love this one. Every buyer needs a strategy when determining which property to buy, how much to offer, and any number of factors that are, in, that are involved in crafting said offer. Nowhere uh, was this more evident than during the pandemic, during the real estate boom, when failure, excuse me, when failure to plan was planning to fail. Strategies had to be continually adjusted and refined for each property that came on the market that a buyer was interested in because of lessons learned from offers that didn't get accepted in the past. Going back to what Monty said a little bit ago, buyers who worked with agents who were savvy uh, strategy wise and knew how to craft a winning offer mm -hmm. had much more success. I, I, I remember those uh, pandemic, post pandemic days where it's like, 
and I, I, I've said this so many times the last couple of weeks where you can take a picture of the toilet <laughs> and you had multiple offers in a weekend. <laughs> yeah. You had to do everything, everything you possibly could to make sure that you were, um, you were not only representing the winning offer, but also you wanted that listing agent to love you. Yeah. Right. And I remember time and time again, calling that listing agent and doing, you know, (laughs) schmoozing the heck out of them, you know, aside from price, what's most important to your Mm -hmm. client, you know, you know, what's your, you know, just talking, talking to them. Cause I wanted, when we submitted our offer them to realize or remember, Oh man, Blake, he's got it together. He's got it together. (laughs) Um, and you know, Uh, you can't overstate that the value of that though, Blake, I mean, a lot of agents have only worked on the buyer side. When you work on the listing side and you get multiple offers and you get a chance to see the difference, mm-hmm. and you realize up close and personal mm-hmm. that all realtors are not created equal, that you got some that are slammed together <laughs> and you got some that are done precisely like they should be. Remember this, guys, if you're just getting a listing for the, or you're getting offers, that relationship with you and that other agent is not going to get any better. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> If that, if that, if you're, it's like a new date, you know, if the new date comes to the date late or I can't say late cause I came <laughs> late first time yeah. with Connie, but, um, <laughs> it does say they have bad breath. You know, they're, it's not going to get any better if they, that now is when they're going to impress. Yeah. I mean, that's what Blake's saying there. Your, your first goal is to win the gatekeeper over. Right. It's really, really important. And, and, and that, but that is one piece of the pie if we're talking strategy. Yeah. You know, and I know we're going to talk about it in later to, uh, uh, later segments, but talking about how do we how do we negotiate repairs? How do we approach that? How do we strategize with that? You know, how do we factor in creative lending, um, you know, to win the deal, especially if we don't have any money down or any right. cost to, right. yeah. and we need cost covered, you know? There's so much more to strategy than just being, you know, a, a, uh, an agent for them to remember. That's just a piece of it. Well, yeah. and let's be honest, a really smart monkey can check boxes on a piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it takes the experience and the education or the collaboration. Like right. we are all learning from each other's experiences all the time. So we better know how to present mm-hmm. offers. So that strategy really only comes from kind of a concerted effort, right. trying to learn and, and how to apply strategy, not just being the monkey. <laughs> That's why I think these kind of um, sessions are so important to learn from one another. That's why we've always said at Realty One Group Music City that collectively together we're stronger than we are individually. Real estate in general is kind of a lone ranger sport many times. That's why I think it's so important to collaborate and share best practice as, right. as we always try to do. Mm-hmm. Chrissy, go ahead and take number five if you would. Uh, we are on number six. six. I mean, number six. I'm sorry. Um, offer preparation. So we've kind of touched on this, but speaking of strategy, offer prep is a critical part of buyer representation. It's extremely important for an agent to go over all the details that need to be completed as part of that offer process and ensure all the flows are happening in a logical manner with contract timelines and contingencies. It is a detail oriented work that must be precise. Failure to include something or accidentally omitting something, overlooking a contingency that needed to be included, these things can have serious consequences. From the huge down, ones. huge, <laughs> from the down payment to the amount financed, time frames, appraisal, inspection contingency, any other specific requests to establish that clear roadmap to work from at the beginning of the transaction. All timelines must not overlap the closing date and should not create an impossible situation with meeting a deadline. It is not a matter of checking a few boxes on forms and sending them off to the buyer to sign electronically. So do not be the monkey. Be oh, better than the monkey. Yes, please. <laughs> I never forget the time I for, first time I forgot to put the refrigerator down on the offer. It's oh. like crap. <laughs> now I guess who bought a refrigerator? Yeah, who bought a refrigerator? Yeah. <laughs> I bought a refrigerator. There's been other situations like that as well cuz you get in a hurry oh. and you and maybe you did more than one offer for somebody and you thought that you'd put something down that you didn't. Yeah. So anyhow, offer preparation obviously is, is super critical. Oh, yep. Totally, Guys, let's, uh, let's pick up number seven at our next time together. And um, uh, again, I hope people are picking up nuggets. You know, just one nugget can save you thousands of dollars, I'm, my belief is. And, and there are 12 more. There's a total of 18. We've just covered six of those th- re- things that you need to internalize that you truly understand and, and have clearly put in your mind when you're challenged about your value that you can speak from the heart as somebody who is absolutely confident about your value. And one of the ways you can do that is to be reminded on occasion of these kind of things so that it triggers those memories when you're being pushed back on. So thanks for joining us. Be sure and, ch- and check us out here again at the talk of Music City Real Estate very, very soon. Thanks. Talk to you soon.
Oh, 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 oh,